Obia, sometimes spelled Obi, Obia, Abaya, or Obia, is a system of spiritual and healing practices developed among enslaved West Africans in the West Indies. Obia is difficult to define, as it is not a single, unified set of practices. The word Obia was historically not often used to describe one's own practices. Some scholars, such as Diana Patton, have contended that what constitutes Obia in Jamaica has been constructed by white society, particularly law enforcement. Accordingly, different Afro-Caribbean communities use their own terminology to describe the practice, such as science among the Jamaican Windward Maroons. Obia is similar to other Afro-American religions such as Palo, Haitian Vodou, Santeria, and Hoodoo in that it includes communication with ancestors and spirits and healing rituals. Nevertheless, it differs from religions like Vodou and Santeria in that there is no explicit canon of gods or deities that is worshipped, and the practice is generally an individual action rather than part of a collective ceremony or offering. It differs from Mile in that Mile focuses more on the connection of humans and spirits. By some early colonial authorities, they differed in that Obia was viewed as nefarious, while Mile was a more positive influence. Variants of Obia are practiced in the Bahamas and in the Caribbean nations of Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, Saint Lucia, Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, and the Virgin Islands, as well as by the Igbo people of Nigeria. In some cases, aspects of these folk religions have survived through syncretism with Christian symbolism and practice introduced by European colonials and slave owners. Origins <inaudible> 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 In parts of the Caribbean where Obia developed, slaves were taken from a variety of African nations with differing spiritual practices and religions. It is from these arrivals and their spiritualisms that Obia originates. The origins of the word, Obia, have been contested in the academic community for nearly a century. There is not a widely accepted consensus on what region or language the word derives from, and there is a politics to every hypothesis. Orlando Patterson promoted an Akan TWI etymology, suggesting that the word came from Gold Coast communities. He and other proponents of the Akan TWI hypothesis argued that the word was derived from Obeyafo, a word associated with malevolent magic by Ashanti priests. Akan, witchcraft. Kwasi Kanadu suggested a somewhat updated version of this etymology, suggesting that Bayai, the neutral force used by the Obeyafo, is the source material, a word with a slightly less negative connotation. The first time in Jamaican history the term, Obia, was used in the colonial literature was in reference to Nanny of the Marones and Akan woman, considered the ancestor of the Windward Marone community and celebrated for her role in defeating the British and securing a land treaty in 1739, as an old witch and a hag. Obia has also received a great deal of attention for its role in Taki's Rebellion also in Akan, the 1760 conflict that spurred the passage of the first Jamaican anti-Obia law. The term, mile was first recorded by Edward Long in 1774 when describing a ritual dance done by Jamaican slaves. At first the practices of Obia and Mile were not considered different. Over time, Mile men involved in spirit affairs involved themselves with Jamaican native Baptist churches, bringing Mile rituals into the churches. Over time these mile influenced churches began preaching the importance of baptisms and the eradication of obia thus formally separating the two traditions despite its associations with a number of Akan slaves and rebellions the origin of obia has been criticized by several writers who hold that an igbo origin is more likely According to W.E.B. Du Bois Institute database he traces obia to the dibia or obia igbo doctoring traditions of the igbo people Specialists in Obia, also spelled Obia were known as Ndi Obia, Igbo, Obia people, and practiced the same activities as the Obia men and women of the Caribbean like predicting the future and manufacturing charms. Among the Igbo there were oracles known as Obia which were said to be able to talk. Parts of the Caribbean where Obia was most active imported a large number of its slaves from the Igbo-dominated Baita Biafra. 
This interpretation is also favored by Kenneth Bilby, arguing that Dibia connotes a neutral master of knowledge and wisdom. In another hypothesis, the EFIK language is the root of Obia, where the word Obia comes from the EFIK Ubio meaning a bad omen. Melville Herskovitz endorsed a different EFIK origin, arguing that Obia was a corruption of an EFIK word for doctor. In colonial British communities, aside from referring to the set of spiritual practices, Obia also came to refer to a physical object, such as a talisman or charm, that was used for evil magical purposes. The item was referred to as an Obia item, e.g., an Obia ring or an Obia stick, translated as ring used for witchcraft or stick used for witchcraft, respectively. Obia incorporated various beliefs from the religions of later migrants to the colonies where it was present. Obia also influenced other religions in the Caribbean, e.g., Christianity, which incorporated some Obia beliefs. Topic: History. The term obia is first found in documents from the early 18th century, as in its connection to Nanny of the Marones. Colonial sources referred to the spiritual powers attributed to her in a number of derogatory ways, ranging from referring to her as the rebel's old obia woman to characterizing her as unsexed and more bloodthirsty than Marone men. Marone oral traditions discuss her feats of science in rich detail. She is said to have used her obia powers to kill British soldiers in Nanny's Pot, a boiling pot without a flame below it that soldiers would lean into and fall in, to quickly grow food for her starving forces, and to catch British bullets and either fire them back or attack the soldiers with a machete. Discussion of obia became even more frequent when it was made illegal in Jamaica after Taki's War. During the rebellion, Taki is said to have consulted an obiaman who prepared for his forces a substance that would protect them from British bullets, which boosted their confidence in executing the rebellion. In 1787, a letter to an English newspaper referred to Obiu women interpreting the wishes of the dead at the funeral of a murdered slave in Jamaica. A footnote explained the term as meaning wise women. A continuing source of white anxiety related to Obia was the belief that practitioners were skilled in using poisons, as mentioned in Matthew Lewis's journal of a West India proprietor. Many white Jamaicans accused women of such poisonings. One case Lewis discussed was that of a young woman named Minetta who was brought to trial for attempting to poison her master. Lewis and others often characterized the women they accused of poisonings as being manipulated by obiamen, who they contended actually provided the women with the materials for poisonings. The laws forbidding obia reflected this fear. An anti obia law passed in Barbados in 1818 specifically forbade the possession of any poison, or any noxious or destructive substance. A doctor who examined the medicine chest of an Obia man arrested in Jamaica in 1866 identified white arsenic as one of the powders in it, but could not identify the others. The unnamed correspondent reporting this affirmed, "...the Jamaica herbal is an extensive one, and comprises some highly poisonous juices, of which the Obia men have a perfect knowledge." During the mid-19th century the appearance of a comet in the sky became the focal point of an outbreak of religious fanatical millennialism among the mile men of Jamaica. Spiritualism was at that time sweeping the English-speaking nations as well, and it readily appealed to those in the Afro-Caribbean diaspora, as spirit contact, especially with the dead, is an essential part of many African religions. During the conflict between Mile and Obia, the Mile men positioned themselves as the good opponents to evil obia they claimed that obia men stole people's shadows and they set themselves up as the helpers of those who wished to have their shadows restored mile men contacted spirits in order to expose the evil works they ascribed to the obia men and led public parades which resulted in crowd hysteria that engendered violent antagonism against obia men the public discovery a buried Obia charms, presumed to be of evil intent, led on more than one occasion to violence against the rival Obia practitioners. Such conflicts between supposedly good and evil spiritual work could sometimes be found within plantation communities. 
In one 1821 case brought before court in Burbish, an enslaved woman named Madelon allegedly died as a result of being accused of malevolent obia that caused the drivers at Op Hoop Van Beta Plantation to fall ill. The man implicated in her death, a spiritual worker named Willem, conducted an illegal Minya Mumma dance to divine the source of the obia, and after she was chosen as the suspect, she was tortured to death. Laws were passed that limited both obia and mild traditions. Topic: <laughs> Obia in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago, obia includes the unique practice of the moko jumbi, or stilt dancer. Moko was a common word for Ibbo slaves. In the Trinidad and Tobago obia tradition, a duan is a child who has died before being baptized, and is said to be forced to forever walk the earth at night in English-speaking regions of the Caribbean. Jewelry is made from deadly toxic red and black seeds called jumbies, jumbi eyes or jumbi beads seeds of Abris precatorius containing the AB toxin abrin in the Caribbean and South America. By contrast, the moko jumbi of Trinidad and Tobago is brightly colored, dances in the daylight, and is very much alive. The moko jumbi also represents the flip side of spiritual darkness, as stilt dancing is most popular around holy days and carnival. Topic obia in literature Although 18th century literature mentions obia often, one of the earliest references to obia in fiction can be found in 1800, in William Earle's novel Obi, or, The History of Three-Fingered Jack, a narrative inspired by true events that was also reinterpreted in several dramatic versions on the London stage in 1800 and following. One of the next major books about obia was Hamill, The Obia Man 1827. Several early plantation novels also include obia plots. In Marriott's novel Poor Jack 1840, a rich young plantation owner ridicules superstitions held by English sailors but himself believes in obia. The 20th century saw less actual obia in open practice, but it still continued to make frequent appearances in literature. The following is only a partial list. Alistair Crowley, a controversial English mystic, declared the Book of the Law was dictated to him in 1904 by a non physical being. Ch 1 verse 37 reads Also the mantras and spells, the obia and the wanga, the work of the wand and the work of the sword, these shall he learn and teach. Henry S. Whitehead, who lived for some time on St. Croix in the Caribbean, published his supernatural tale the Jumbi in Weird Tales 1926. The story lent its title to his collection Jumbi and Other Uncanny Tales 1944. Zora Neale Hurston researched and wrote widely on the subject, including essays, drama, and the novel Jonas Gord Vine. The former slave, Christophine, in Jean Reese's novel Wide Sargasso Sea is a practitioner of obia. Solitaire, the female lead in the James Bond novel Live and Let Die, is said to have the power of the obia, an obia woman is a sort of matchmaker in Earl Lovelace's novel Salt. Mark Hillman in Derek Walcott's epic poem Omeros is a healer who uses obia. In the novels and memoirs of Jamaica Kincaid there are several passages that mention obia. There are frequent references to Obia in The Suffrage of Elvira written by V. S. Naipaul a central character in Unburnable is reputed to be an Obia woman. The protagonist of the novel Brown Girl in the Ring by Nalo Hopkinson is an Obia woman in training, learning from her grandmother. She uses her abilities to defeat an evil Obia man and his duppy. Obia is heavily referenced in Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child's novel Cemetery Dance. A main character in the 2009 YA novel Three Witches by Paula Jolin Roaring Brook, Macmillan, is a native of Trinidad and attempts to use Obia to raise a dead classmate. Several characters in the book The Book of Night Women by Marlon James are said to practice Obia, and it is a focal point at a number of points in the novel. Shadowcatcher, the antagonist in the Nicholas da Silva graphic novel series Dread and Alive novel, is an Obia man who uses Obia to regain the prized amulet taken away from him by his brother, Cudjo, the mileman of the Jamaican Maroons. Robert Louis Stevenson Jameson and his brother Arthur Conan Doyle Jameson are both practicing Obia in the Necroscope, the Lost Years novel from Brian Lumley. Obia figures in prominently in the Lazarus Curse drive. Thomas Silkston No. 4 by Tessa Harris
The story centers around Jamaican slaves in 18th century England and the Obia men and their spells, talismans. Marie Magdalene Carbot, Martinique's most prolific woman writer, wrote a short story, Obia, now republished in English translation along with the original French by Michigan State Up as Obia and other Martinican stories. Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, Golden Birdies, on the Clear Spot album refers to an Obi Man, clearly a kind of voodoo priest. Up one hand broom star was an Obi Man, revered throughout the Bone Knob land, his magic black purse slit creeped open, let go flocks of them. <laughs> See also West African Vodun, West African religion, an antecedent of Haitian Vodou. Topic Notes Topic External Links History of antagonism between Mayalism and Obia in Jamaica Obia Afro Caribbean Shamanism The Caribbean Black Magic Obia Interview with White Magician